So we got some more information about the PSVR 2 just the other day, yesterday I believe as of this recording. And they have finally put everything out there. We got the price, the, the release date, games that are going to be with it, some specs and things like that. And I wanted to take a minute and look at some of that, seeing as how I am a bit of an VR enthusiast, I guess. I, I really like VR. And we're going to look at it and give my thoughts as to what I think about the PS VR 2. Let's go ahead and talk about the big elephant in the room, and that would be the price. Sony has set a recommended retail price of the PS VR 2 at this is USD 550 fucking dollars holy shit a price that makes the hardware cost more than the PS5 PS5 console itself that's both of them PS5 right now in America um, just the console itself without a game good luck finding that yeah to get into this thing apparently you're gonna be looking at 550 dollars just for the headset and the controllers of course you have to have a PS5 to play that and we're gonna get into backwards compatibility in a moment as well and ps5 is in america five hundred dollars you're looking at a thousand dollars at least to get into this thing before taxes or anything like that to get into psvr2 now comparably speaking to what else we got um i'm gonna say i'm gonna compare it to something like the the index the index is 4.99 just the headset you don't get the controllers you don't have the base stations if you already have or lighthouses most people i think that are going to be jumping into the index are going to be getting the whole thing so yeah after all said and done and of course you have to buy a pc it is going to cost more to get the index it's going to cost you more to get into that and of course then you also have the, the meta quest 2 which is a phenomenal headset as well and it works with pc too there's two of them i think it's 399 and 499 don't quote me on those prices it's right around in there so it's cheaper now with that one you don't have to have a pc for that thing to work you buy it and it works now having a pc to be able to do pc vr greatly enhances the experience don't get me wrong but you don't have to so you just pay that and you get right into it and of course some of you will say well the psvr2 is technically superior in some ways in a lot of ways honestly and we're going to talk about that as well the biggest issue well one of the biggest issues is that it's only the PS5. The MetaQuest you can use just on its own. You can use it with a PC, whatever. And there is a huge amount of games on the PC. And same with the Vive. One of the neat things about this headset, while it was only for that system, only for their ecosystem, it didn't cost as much. So it was a little bit easier pill to swallow. It was outclassed by all the PC VR headsets, but it did its job, it did good. You know, this made a bit more sense. It was still a niche product. It still is a niche product, but that is why it was successful is because of its price point. And it does go forward and work with the PS5 as well. So it at least works with multiple systems. With this one, it's PS5 only. That is ridiculous. And that takes us into backwards compatibility. There is none, and that is ridiculous. I talked about this on the show. A few weeks back there is no reason beyond monetary reasons and trying to force people into buying another thing i.e the ps5 or something like that that the psvr2 should not work with the ps4 there's just no reason at all it, it is superior hardware i had a vive i go to the index now everything that worked on steam with the index or with the Vive, does it work with the Index? That's stupid. The Index is more powerful. Of course, it, it, there, I, I would be more believing in, hey, there's things that the Vive can't do that the Index could do, which isn't true. Honestly, all the games that work with this one work with this one. They all work. They just look better and have a few more features on the newer hardware. I think it's kind of shitty even so to say that, hey, this headset, the PSVR 1, will work with the PS5, but those psvr2 games will not i i feel as if you should be able to make it work with this but you know what okay that's consoles especially playstation that's how they work to a degree uh, i'm cool with that but the backwards compatibility part the psvr2 not working with the older games there's just no reason for it i don't give a shit what they say it's no there's no reason for it it can easily run those games they're just going to lock them out where you can what is that costing them if nothing else it will boost their software sales on the older games if you had it open up to where it was backwards compatible you release this ps psvr2 and then hey you're not coming into this thing with just the handful of games that they're going to have you've got this long library of vr titles you can go back and buy until the newer games come out 
that's being good to your customers, but they clearly don't give a shit about that. All right, so moving on, that's the price. $550, tough pill to swallow in my opinion. Um, VR is an expensive hobby to get into for sure, but I do feel like it does not need to be that expensive. Uh, the release date. Uh, it's February 2023, February 22nd, 2023, so it's not that far off. We're going to be getting this thing in about three or four months. You could start to pre-order it November 15th. I could be wrong. Yeah, pre-orders will go live November 15th. Specifications. Now, this is one th would think why this thing costs so much. You know, d does it have just some bad specs that we're going to be getting. Well, yes, it does have some pretty good specs. There's some good stuff about this. Looks like the internals of the PSVR 2, right out of the gate, you can expect a 2000 by 2040 per eye resolution using OLED HDR displays, 110 degree field of view, and a maximum refresh rate of 120 hertz. Some of you are like, that means nothing to me. Let me put it in perspective for you. The Quest 2 has somewhere in the neighborhood of 1800, I believe is what it is. Um, and this is 2000. So yes, this is, it's better than the Quest. The Quest has a really clean, nice display. Um, it's field of view is somewhere more along the lines of a hundred degrees. So this has a little bit more, I think it's like a hundred and five degrees or somewhere in there. It's, it's variable. This has a bit of a wider field of view. Good for them. Now the index, which I think that this is more in line with competing with the index hardware wise is around i think it is actually 1440 if memory serves so it's even less it's even lower so this does have a higher resolution display or displays than the valve index so that's something good because the valve index is kind of seen as the pinnacle right now the the top dog all right this one does have a higher resolution now as far as the field of view on the index it's about 110 degrees as well and the 120 hertz now the valve index can go up to 144 hertz those are the three the the field of view the resolution of the screens and the hertz what speed it's running at these are the three main things people look at hardware wise besides being wireless and whatnot when you come to these headsets. Now that does bring us to another thing, wireless. This is a wired headset. Now I will say it's better than this one. This one has quite the clusterfuck when you go to hook it up. While it is a single cord for most of the time, it does split off in these two. This new PSVR 2 is gonna have one single USB-C plug, and that's cool, I think. Um, I am curious as to how long that cord's gonna be. So yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a comparison to its two main competitors, I guess. Um, those two other competitors though, they work with PC and there's so many games on PC and that's one of the big things about this thing. It is going to have games, yes, but you are locked into that ecosystem and that ecosystem alone and that's a bit of a problem for me. The controllers. Now this does come with controllers as you can see them here. Um, they have a new controller with the old PlayStation VR. You use the Move controllers, two of these, or the PS4 controller or PS5 I guess. These get the job done, I suppose, <laughs> but they are far from ideal. As you'll see, there's no thumbstick on here or anything. And as I've attested to for years, no thumbstick, no bueno. With these new ones, it looks like they're trying to do an all-in-one with this new controller. They look as if they are modeled very much after the Oculus or the uh, MetaQuest 2 um, controller. It looks as if their ring, this ring right here is so that the headset can see it and track it. Looks as if their ring actually goes around your hand a bit instead of, as you'll see with this one, it's in front of you. I don't think that those are there to hold your hand in place, but they you kind of will put your hand inside of that ring. They are very similar to these though. You have a trigger, you've got a grip button, uh, two buttons, a, uh, and a function button, start button, whatever, and a thumbstick. So it looks like pretty much these, they just move the ring down this way a little bit. But that does bring us to another thing about this headset. It is inside out tracking. It has four cameras, which is what MetaQuest 2 has. There are cameras on the index, but it uses the lighthouse tracking. The issue with inside out tracking is it is never going to be as accurate as lighthouse tracking or external tracking. The tracking of this thing is really damn good but it's going to, you get real crazy with it and sometimes it will lose. And it will, might only be for a, you know, a millisecond or something like that, but you will notice it. It goes out of sight of those cameras. It's not going to know what you're doing besides it uses a accelerometer where it, it knows it's rolling. Now with these, they use out external tracking. So no matter where this thing is, it knows where it is because the headset's not tracking it. 
boxes up on the ceiling are. Drawback is, wherever you got this, that's where it is. That room that you got it in, that's where you're using it. The cool thing about the MetaQuest and now this one, and anything with inside out tracking cameras on it to track, you can go anywhere and play it. It scans the room from the headset. Everything is built into the headset. I do think that's cool. I can't comment, of course, on the tracking of this. Of course, they say the tracking is phenomenal. Of course they are. They're not gonna come out with a new product and be like, yeah, tracking, I'm inside. <laughs> you know, they're not gonna do that. I saw a video of someone play testing it and they said the tr tracking was really good. It did lose here or there just for a moment, much like the Quest does. And that that's fine. Honestly, that that's workable. It's good. Is it as good as external tracking? No, and I don't think it ever will. Well, not for a long time. It won't ever be. I don't think the inside out is a bad thing here. Just know that, you know, the, the it is as we currently are, external tracking is always going to be a bit more accurate. I think that most people are, especially if you've never done the external tracking, you're not going to know. You're, you're very rarely going to experience any issues with it. So that's fine. So yeah, the controllers are cool, but it's none of it is as accurate as this thing. And these are some phenomenal controllers. Make this, this is the, this is what you should have modeled your controller after Sony. Just go with that. Overall, technically, I think that this is, uh, I mean, it's a cool system. I don't have a problem with the hardware, the technical side of this headset. It looks cool. I am not a huge fan of the Halo, like this one, like the, the original. It's a, they call that the Halo strap. It like goes on and like squeezes onto your head. It never feels as secure. I mean, unless you like clamp it down on your head real hard. And at that point you, that can get uncomfortable after a while. Now, the one other thing about this headset that I do see and something missing that I was, especially with this price point that I just will say is, in my opinion, unacceptable. What's missing from this picture? The lack of headphones. Much like the PSVR 1, there are no built-in headphones to this thing. That's unfortunate that they couldn't put in, they've got those nice headphones that the, for the PlayStation 5. Build them into it. Some people will say, well, that gives you the option to put whatever headphones on there you want. But yeah, or they could have just included some really nice fucking headphones. At $550, you're, you're more than $1,000 into this thing before tax. Can I get some headphones? Some decent headphones, not just, you know, earbuds. I mean, come on. You've got all this tech built into this thing that is really good. You can't, you just fuck sound. I mean, that is part of the immersive experience there. So that, that's, that's disappointing. It's disappointing, but not surprising. But for $550, once again, I should not have to be buying anything else to go with this thing. Oh, also for comparison, for those of you that do have the PSVR 1 comparison spec wise, just real quick, I forgot to include that. Resolution wise, like I said, this one's 2000 per eye. That one was 960. So there is quite the jump. If you've only ever used the PSVR 1 when you jump into this PSVR 2, you probably will be blown away. You'll be like, holy shit, this looks a whole lot better. Uh, field of view, it looks like is at about 10 degrees wider. You'll probably somewhat notice that. That's not a huge difference. This one does include vibration in the headset, and I do think that's cool. That's a pretty cool thing to add. Like if you get punched in the face in the game, you'll get a little bit of force feedback there in the face. That's, that's neat. I do like that, and that's what gets me. They're including things like that. They're including motors and rumble in the fucking headset. They're including all this cool tech. You can include headphones, not to mention backwards compatibility, but you know, I'm not gonna beat that dead horse. All right, so how about games? Cause you could have the best headset in the world and without games, what do you got? Not shit, because that's what you're here to play. I don't have release dates on any of this, but this is all like stuff that is confirmed for the game. I know that the Horizon Call of the Wild game is going to be coming out with the system because they are going to have a bundle. Um, you can't, it, the system comes, that $500, $550 price tag, by the way, is just the headset controllers, no games. But they will have a Horizon Call of the Wild bundle that will be, I think, $50 more that is going to come with that game. So, of course, that game will be out at launch. Other games that are announced, Dark Pictures, Switchback VR, Crossfire, Sierra Squad, The Light Brigade, Cities VR Enhanced Edition, uh, Cosmonious High, Hello Neighbor, Search and Rescue, Jurassic World Aftermath Collection, Pistol Whip VR, awesome game, Zenith, The Lost City, After the Fall, uh, Tentacular, Resident Evil Village, that's neat, uh, Resident Evil 7 VR was exclusive to the uh, PSVR, one of the main reasons I bought the thing, because I wanted to play that. Star Wars Tales for the Galaxy's Edge Enhanced Edition. That's been out for a while. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, Chapter 2. It's a good game. Samurai Slaughterhouse, Runner Among Us VR, and Firmament. Some of these have not been out, but the ones that are out. Cities VR, I have not played, but I've seen. I just... There... That's not for everybody. Some people enjoy those kind of resource type of games like that. They're not my thing. Uh, Hello Neighbor, uh, I have not played a VR version of that, but just... 
I figure it's going to be the regular version just in VR. That could be cool. Those first person running around games. That could be neat. I don't know what Jurassic World Aftermath is. Pistol Whip VR is awesome. That will be that will be good. That'll be a good game. So if you're on the fence and you're wanting to get VR, that's one to get. That's an awesome game. Depending on how. If they have $70 for that shit, it is not worth it. But I mean, if that game for 40 bucks, absolutely worth it. And yes, it's cheaper than that on Steam. But I know PlayStation's pricing. Uh, After the Fall is a cool game. That game's been out for quite a while but that is still a good game resident evil village of course is going to be like uh that, that'll be good star wars uh tales from galaxy edge uh, enhanced edition that's been out a while too that's it's cool i mean that is definitely not a full price game either among us vr among us is among us i mean it's just gonna be in vr that's already available i've not played it but Okay, I'm not a big Among Us fan. I'm not an Among Us fan, but if you are, you probably like that. That's all I know about those games right there. What's sad, though, is this catalog right here could be so much more if you would just open up the PSVR 1 catalog to this. That would be a huge selling point to people. Saying, hey, you missed PSVR 1, which many people did. You can get that whole catalog with this. What is scary about this about this backwards compatible situation or compatibility situation i guarantee you they're going to start re-releasing some of these games from psvr 1 on psvr 2 it's just gonna be the same damn game beat saber you don't have a vr headset if you don't have beat saber and it just is what it is beat saber is on psvr 1 i guarantee they're going to release a psvr 2 version it'll just be the same game and that's bullshit my overall take on the PSVR 2, it's got a lot of cool tech in it. It looks the part. I like the hardware. I don't like the lack of a, any type of audio source, uh, or if you're giving us a cheap ass one like the old one, give some quality audio to this thing built the fuck in. But I do like the controllers. I do like the headset itself. I like the neat little things like the rumble in the headset, the inside out tracking, if it if done well, could be really good. The high resolution, the field of view, all that stuff, comparably speaking at least, I like. $550 for this? No, I think that's too much. I think this should have been $399. If this was $399, I think it'd sell like hot, hot cakes. $499, I think it's too much. I'd say $350. And yeah, I know it's got a lot of high tech tech in it, but let's be real, this is the tech world. This thing's gonna be outdated within a year. There's gonna be other headsets that come along that are up to or higher in, in the tech space than this thing. It is what it is. So yeah, I mean, $550, I wouldn't pay that for it. Not when it's, this is all you're gonna be able to do on it is, is the P PlayStation, that's it. Nothing against those games. There's some great experiences there. Make it to where you can plug this thing in to your PC and use it with Steam. And also PlayStation, do that, make that your way in. Hey, PSVR 2 or whatever, you can use it with your PC. You can use it with Steam. Have a portal or something. You've got your games on Steam. You can hook it up to your computer and use it with Steam, but you can also hook it up to your PlayStation. But then people say, well, I want to hook up my Quest to my PlayStation. Then no, no, you have to buy it. Make that the have to. That's okay. Say, no, if you want to use it with PlayStation, you have to buy the hardware. However, we're opening it up. Because there's, I guarantee, if it's one USB-C, you could hook this thing up to a PC and use it there. Why not? That's doing good things for your consumer. That's making, adding value, lots of value to your product. But they ain't going to do that. I mean, I highly doubt they're ever going to do that. They could do that. I bet they could easily do that. That's where we are. That's what we've got. Of course, we just got to see what people think about it. There are some videos out there of people getting early access to it and, and using it in controlled environments, and it looked like they liked what they had. I think this thing's going to work great. I don't have an issue with the hardware. I have an issue with some of the things surrounding it. I have an issue with the lack of content, the lack of you know, some of their things they're doing, like the backwards compatible compatibility, the headphones, the, all those things I mentioned, that's my issues. I think this is gonna be great, just not for that price. That's what I thought. You guys let me know in the comments below what you thought or what you think about the forthcoming PSVR 2. And do you plan on getting one? Do you have any kind of interest in VR? I mean, VR is an amazing tool when used properly. Are you looking forward to this? Let me know in the comments below.